Good evening, welcome to Von Moth's Presents. Moths to do about nothing. Moths to do about nothing. Moths to do about nothing. Where we apply the revolutionary moth scale to classic and contemporary literature. Moths to do about nothing. Moths to do about nothing. This podcast contains mature content, spoilers, language, you have been warned. Hello, and welcome back to uh, The Lost Signals Discusses Literature. Uh, we're, today we're going to be talking about a short story that I kind of found on the internet through just some searching, so I hadn't read it before I suggested it. We're going to go through talking about it today. This story is called Thank You. It's a story by Alejandro Zambra. My name is Steve Ramosi. I am joined today by Scott Thurlow. How's it going? And Chris Morgan. Good evening. And um, let's just jump right into talking about the story. I'm going to discuss the plot a little bit, and we'll we'll get started there. So... This is a story about uh, these this these not, two people, not couple. right? They're they're a couple, but it's you know complicated, right? Sure. They're writers that live who live in uh, who, who are in Mexico, uh, being writers basically. They uh, the the guy lives with a bunch of the guy lives with the other with the other people, right? Yeah, I, I think, think the guy so. lives with the with a bunch of other people. They spend a lot of time in his house. This story mostly happens. In my mind, the story happens after an event where they get mugged, and then it's kind of them telling about what happened to story them to the their story roommates, yeah, of Everest. To, to their to their roommates, and and just going through it. It's uh, an interesting way to talk about it. They kind of go into the details of the mugging, and like, and well, then and then tell it like, five and then they times. yeah, and then they get like like anybody would. It's kind of the the story of like. Anytime something big happens to you and you have to tell all your friends about yeah, it, like, exactly. over and over and over again. So, that's kind of it. Uh, we'll go a little bit more into detail as we talk about the plot, but that's the overall idea of this story. Now, it's a short story. It's it's actually quite short. pretty short, even for the short stories that we do. Mm. Um, but I enjoyed reading it. It's got, like, uh, this sense of kind of um, its own gravity to it where you kind of, like, fall into reading it. I, I never... Got bored with it. Of course, it's only like eight pages or whatever. But um, Alejandro Zambra has an interesting style, which is a lot different. You know, and it's a translation, so you'll, say, you'll, to you'll get a little translation, yeah, right? and you'll so you'll get a little different take on it. I'm sure if you read it in the original uh, Spanish. But um, I liked a lot of the details that they tell at the beginning of the story and like certain things don't come out until later which is kind of the way that things happen when stories are like this are told you know among amongst uh, friends and stuff like that so uh, that's kind of it uh, there's not a ton to this story <laughs> right. um, so I'll probably give it a decent score on plot but I want to hear what you guys have to say about it and... I I, th- I really like Slice of Life Things that really don't kind of just start and stop. Um, this was weird because this is a this is a single incident. Uh, the, the the couple gets mugged, gets kidnapped, and then let go. They walk back to the house, and then you start getting details. And like you said, they they tell the story a number of times, but each time you get a little more detailed. You get to the whole point where the guy was wearing a mask. And he's talking about like the guy should cut his hair because it's really seventies, and he threw out his glasses, <laughs> and that he'd fuck his girlfriend if he wasn't there, and yeah, you know, this that whole was weird. this whole thing, and it, it's just it, it's one of these things that j- that was like a color that came out afterwards because the thing that I liked the best about it was on the way on the they started off saying that they had this relationship that they were keeping a secret, mm-hmm. and then. When they're walking back, they get implications where, like, you know, they might, they might not survive it as a couple because sometimes couples break out, break up, or get together over a trauma, and um, and they kind of talk this through everybody, and and it kind of they, you lose focus of them, and then afterwards they get cleaned up and go sleep, and they don't have sex, but it's just like they're cuddling, so you get an idea that they're that they're gonna stay together, so it's it's kind of like it, it it's kind of like the it, 
it kind of begins and it's there and then there's this beautiful ending to it so it's it's kind of hard to this is kind of hard to grade actually it's it's a short story and it just i don't know it, it, it i don't know scott uh, I do not find it hard to grade. I've got, I have written down two, and uh, and I'll say why I guess. Yeah, it was a nice little, like you said, slice of life story. And I don't like necessarily enjoy these the most, but this was a fine one that I've read. And it's a translation, so you probably get a little different angle mm-hmm. if you're reading it into original native language. But I thought it was like, yeah, like you said, it's a nice, like sort of anecdotal kind of anecdote about an anecdote in a way. And it's it's built in it very nicely with with them like sort of denying to uh, outwardly and to each other in a in a sense that they're a couple and then then ending up being close together because yeah. I guess a traumatic ish incident that happened to them that was well portrayed but like you said it's there's not much to it like maybe we'll talk more in themes but plot wise not much happens an event yeah an exciting event happens and then they are forced to retell it to their friends and like neighbors yeah so that's fine and that like uh, ends up like bringing them the two main characters as a couple together sure but also I'm giving like a solid two I don't think it deserves a three but I think for what was there was perfectly fine, and I enjoyed it for the most part. And any other nitpicks I have are going to be in other questions. So, I'm probably there with you. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna read these really quick because you mentioned that it has this really nice bookend, which, which it does. I like it a lot. Um, the very beginning uh, starts off with somebody who you don't know who it is at this point saying, "I got a feeling you two are together and you're keeping it a secret," and then they respond, "No, we're not." And then at the end. There's nothing really resolved in the relationship that's happening in this, but it says, I'm just going to really quickly read the last paragraph. It says, they sleep, they're, they're, they're basically, they're done telling all their friends about their experience and they go to sleep together and it says, they sleep badly, but they sleep and they go on talking the next day as if they had their whole lives in front of them and were willing to work at love. And if someone were observing them from afar, someone brash, someone who believed in these kinds of stories, someone who collected them and tried to tell them well, Someone who believed in love would think that the two of them will be together for a very long time, which kind of is a is a throw to like, I think the author uh, himself when he says, uh, "Someone who believed in these kinds of stories, someone who collected them and tried to tell them well, like that." Perhaps this is something similar to something he's heard before, or, or something like that. So I, I like that ending, and whether or not that's the case is kind it's of irrelevant. Thing, I think. Sure. But, but yeah, I, I agree with you, Scott. I think I'm going to give it a two. There's like not lag, but there's parts in the middle that are just yeah. I, I think too. Like I think too is a fair assessment. That's yeah. what you know, I mean. Like I think, like I said, it deserves a solid, but I don't think it deserves full credit. But yeah. there's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just this is the way it's frameworked. Right. All right. So two's all around for plot. Uh, Seems and like it. let's go on to themes with Chris. Uh, themes here. Uh, it's kind of funny because uh, when you reread the ending, I caught a. Th- thought of something else well first of all i thought of connections like number one like one of the themes is connection their connection and how their connection is uh objective and subjective like they have their way that they that they take the relationship and then you get different points of view on the relationship and then you get different points of view on the roommates like i was saying precast like you got the, he makes a point in saying like oh they live together but they're not really friends they're all they're all um uh, writers, they, you know, these two like to smoke pot. These two like to drink right. mezcal. They're all from different places. They're all from different places, you know, because the guy is Chilean and the girl is Argentinian, but one of his roommates is Chilean, so it's Chilean one and Chilean two. <laughs> um, so it's it's kind of like this weird connection where like there's a certain amount of an- anonymity, but then there's this. Then you've got the connection with the with the uh, the uh, mugger slash kidnappers. Um, but then there's this other thing about perspective that came to me when you're like, you know, if somebody, if you believed in love and you looked at them, you'd get, you'd feel like they'd get together for a long time. Now, I don't know what you guys thought. I got that impression. Like, you know, when they were talking about, they slept badly, but they did sleep and have sex, but they went on talking like they had their whole lives ahead of them. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I kind of felt that as kind of a rebuilding moment. And then Mm -hmm. you have the, then you have the perspective, uh, as I said before about the, uh, um, muggers where he's just like, yeah, you know, I, I'd fuck your girlfriend, but you know, I'm going to fuck a whore that looks like your girlfriend. It's just like this weird perspective. Cause they had this, you know, idea that they're hiding the relationship and yeah, and there, and he seemed to be in, imposing, impo- imposing a lot of 
him onto the boyfriend, like saying, you know, your haircuts two seventies <laughs> and throw out your glasses. So it, there's this weird perspective to it. And the fact that they had to keep repeating the story and more details came out. Um, so those are the two themes I got out of it. Uh, mugging will keep us together. Mugging is, will keep us obviously together. A theme. No, I mean, like, yeah, we, we've covered it a little bit. Another, um, types of things like this where a shared tragedy can be a bonding moment. And yes, there are other factors at play, uh, at least within terms of the characters. Like you said, like they're trying to keep it a secret, but it's not, it's not too much of a secret to anybody's like looking. Yeah. Even, right. even in the start of the story. So like, and like, the perspective thing is pretty solid. I do like that as well. You get like the different viewpoints of the various, um, side characters i guess and other ancillary characters as it's retold to them in various ways so like i think it's all solid i, I actually had question mark but parentheses one <laughs> as my theme score because like there's not much like i don't want to say there's nothing to it because there certainly is something there it's just that it's not trying to again like focus on a wide variety of things wide array just yeah. maybe one maybe the two things you just said and i think it does it pretty well i think he says what he wanted to say at least in the way i took it and got out of it in that sense so yeah, I mean, uh, I think that there's this interesting take on like a traumatic experience and kind of how people deal with it, how the how the people that went through it deal with it, and how people that are hearing about it deal with it, with all the roommates hearing about it and and their kind of the ways that they react. And the things that they do, mm. like the Chilean starts drinking because they're the two big drinkers. The two Chileans are the big drinkers of the group. <laughs> and like, you know, just like all these kind of different takes on how each one of the characters reacts a little bit. And, and you know, it's a very short story, so it doesn't go too much into that. But you do get kind of that, like, how trauma is dealt with um, depending on how close you are to it and depending on your personality. Yeah. Which I think is a pretty impressive uh, it's an impressive way to deal with something like that, like through between like you know five people in like such a short a short span yeah. story, mm-hmm. which I like. Um, and also there's this very like, Chris, you've mentioned it uh now, like the the scene where they're talking about like the, the there are no hairs split about like when you get into a situation like this, like how horrible it can be especially if you're a woman in this situation because that like i just read that part and i was like that sounds fucking terrifying like you know that like she like despite the fact that the guy got the shit beat out of him like her fate could have been scarier than his you know if yeah, it had gone he's badly. like saying your boyfriend's got balls and i appreciate that but you know what if it wasn't there i'd rape you i mean it's like a it's like this weird yeah it's it's and and this this story does not like shy away from talking about that that, no which is pretty goddamn uncomfortable to be honest when i I was was reading it but like that but but that is certainly the point and um you know i i think that fits into if not exactly the theme then perhaps a style later on but like i think they can be both sort of yeah given credit there uh i'm gonna give themes a one i i like i like where this story went and uh i like not that I like feeling uncomfortable, but it felt a realistic. Sto- a story that can make you feel uncomfortable, but not like fall down the rabbit hole of being too um, lurid just for no reason. Yeah, for no reason, right? But the thing is, they you never. The reason I personally didn't ever go down the monkey hole or the rabbit hole. Sorry, <laughs> what's, the hole? what's the monkey hole? I have no idea. Rabbit hole is because they kept having to retell the story, and if it was like. The worst case scenario, if one of them, you know, did get raped, did, I hardly think they would have sat there and been telling the story again and drinking and everything. You know, she probably. Sure. So, I mean, there was it was uncomfortable, but there was always that tether being like, well, a lot of this is being told past tense. So there is he maintains tension in That's the flashback. But at the same time, you know, you also get an idea like, well, things didn't get worst case scenario so and i i give it a one it's 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 a for five pages or whatever it was it's a kind of a there's a lot in there mm. sure it's packed a yeah. decently full and I, yeah i'm gonna have a solid one on themes if i haven't said that before all right. so that's ones all around uh scott we're gonna go to you for antagonist all right so this is another tricky one i have zero written as my my and my preliminary score and i guess here's my argument why <sighs> 
the antagonists, yes, of course, on the surface are the muggers slash kidnappers. And while they have like some characterization, like the barest bones of it, like maybe just beyond that, it, it, they're more of a vehicle to push like the, as we just said, the theme sort of and the characters, the protagonists, as we'll talk to in a second. Mm. So like, yeah, I guess they're effective at serving that purpose, but I think they're more of a device than actual characters. And of course, if you want to go to like the the thing I usually default to is like just the hardship, like the the random chaos of life that sometimes befalls you. In this case, being a, a kidnapping slash mugging, that yes, what that they, they were shaken up by and were, were felt th- threatened by certainly, but in the end of the day, like it's more of like a now it's a sort of force to push them to grow in their relationship or evolve it. So I don't know, like that's my argument for why I. I leaning towards a zero for antagonist but i'll open up to you guys uh convince me if you have thoughts otherwise that's kind of my reason for giving a one for antagonist because they did they did antagonize them they did have an effect on their relationship they did sure. test the relationship um so i i mean there wasn't there there really isn't much to anybody here in terms of a big backstory or anything. Everything is very in the moment. Right. But I, I felt the attack antagonists were um, effective. I thought they kind of allowed, like I said, with regard to perspective, one of the themes, I, I felt that they helped with that. And I also helped felt that, you know, that's the reason that the relationship was tested. So I, I mean, I'm going to give it a pretty solid one. Yeah. What do you think? Zoo? Um, I don't know. You you make a you make a decent point, but I think that the antagonists were enough of a force in this to for me to say that throughout the story and like they were or know, they weren't enough of a force. They were okay. I, I would say that like you know the the first line is from the from antagonist. One of those yeah, sure, and. Uh, you don't really stop like noticing them. Even in the last paragraph, they sleep badly, but they sleep is a function mm, of it. being antagonized throughout the story. Mm. So, like, <sighs> I think I'm gonna come down on the side of a like a soft one for antagonists. I think you guys might have convinced me. Like, it's funny because you said like using my same argument as the argument <laughs> to give them a one, and but like I get that. Like, I see that side of it. And I think maybe combined, like, I get it, too. I What you said, like, certainly sort of compounded Chris's point. So, yeah, like I, like I said, I was a little bit unsure. Just that's how my, my gut reaction was. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, sitting back and more objectively and perhaps analyzing a bit, I think you're right. Like, they're more of an antagonizing force, even if they're not, like, individually characterized so much. But I think, the, like, they spur, certainly, the characters, the main characters, into some action, or at least it's implied heavily in the right. text. So yeah, I think I will switch to a, a solid one, maybe soft still, but still one at the end of the day now. Okay. Good uh, job, fellas. All right, so one's all around antagonist, so let's go on to protagonist, the Chilean and the Argen- the Argentine. Um, I think that they are decent protagonists. I think that the Argentine is less... Uh, Best characterized, you think? Characterized mm, to an extent think, than the Chilean. Right, go on, sorry. Uh, I just remember more details about the Chilean, the guy. Uh, it's because you're sexist, obviously. Or they just give more detail. <laughs> uh, I mean, so like, they talk about how, well, actually, I, I, I do remember this, like the Argentine, uh, they ask her about soccer, and she kind of feigns ignorance Despite the fact she knows a lot about soccer, I think more than the Chilean. Yep. And yeah, exactly. And like, so that's that's an interesting little tidbit. And like, you know, there's 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 a bunch of different things. Actually, you know what? I take it back to an extent. I, I think that the Chilean does get a little more, but not much. And uh, neither one of them get all that much just because it's because of the length of the story, as we've been mentioning. But um, I I I don't, I don't know if I have enough time to know whether I like these two characters. But I like what is done with them in this mm. story, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a one, and uh, you know, wish them luck on their fucking <laughs> journey. So, funnily enough, I'm gonna say what Chris just said, and like you sort of like realize it yourself as you're talking out that I think they're both equally characterized to the similar extent, but that extent is not huge, right? Right. And then the day, 
and especially because there are no named characters in this entire fucking story. They're mm-hmm. all like characterized by their ethnicity, pretty much, or their jobs as criminals, I suppose. <laughs> but yeah, like I think they like what was there. And I guess sort of like maybe I'll steal something you said from a, a episode or two ago, where you should have the read between the lines of what wasn't described in a sense, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. To like to sort of like your imagination sort of fills that, it out, even if it's not there in a the text. Like the soccer thing is a good example. Mm-hmm. They both know a bit of a thing or two about soccer, but right. she more than he. And they answer the, the kidnappers when they are a question about it. And then it, when you get to the when they get back to their apartment and are inter- interacting with their roommates and friends, neighbors, like I think there's enough there and certainly the, the ending paragraph or two. So I think they're characterized well enough. I think I, I think you said something like or I'll rephrase it like I like the idea of them, even if they're not like perfectly like mm-hmm. fleshed out in, in the story. Yeah. So I think uh, similar to what we just said, I'm going to go with like a soft, if not solid but still one probably for them because i think they were handled well for what was there um i cared about him they you know he did a lot with a little and um i i did care about him i'm gonna say they were effective because they uh, they did affect me um so i i think that's a really good accomplishment to basically have two characters that are more or less anonymous (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> um, and maybe this goes to style, but I'm just as a side, uh, when I, uh, my friend Rob, we, well, you guys met Rob, uh, recommended the book 69 by Ryo Murakami, which is one of my favorite books. And his wife is from Japan. So like when I saw that in the Japanese version of, uh, shall we dance? I got a lot of Japanese culture behind it. So mm-hmm. a lot of the little details made sense. So I'm really kind of curious with this story. I mean, they, they gave you an idea of like, you know, maybe the stereotypes there were for the Chilean and for the Argentinian and the Ecuadorian, but it's kind of like there's another level that I was interested in that I, I if there is, again, it's going to go to style, but with regard to the characters about how everybody has the, the two protagonists are the Chilean, Chilean one and the Argentinian, I, I really want to know what was behind that. Is yeah. basically what I'm saying. And again, it's kind of bleeding over to style, but it was something I thought about while the, that these two are described and not really named. Yeah. So I mean, what you're saying is 69, dude. So, so one. 69. <laughs> what score are you giving? Okay. I'm giving a one. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that's going to be ones all around. Mm-hmm. So let's move on to supporting with Chris. Um, supporting Stop is. your microphone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, supporting is basically the everybody's roommate. And um, they were just kind of there. They were just kind of window dressing. Um, my initial is to give them a zero because they were just kind of there. Um, I think they were the catalyst for retelling the story. And I think that's about it. I mean, they, they provided a little um, catalyst for telling the story. And they're they like were, a springboard. They were a springboard. And they're also, in a weird way, apathetic, um, which I found was – which I found interesting. Um so I don't know. Um, right now I'm leaning towards the zero. If anybody can convince me otherwise. I mean, no, because I sort of doing the same thing, like almost similar to the antagonist case. But I think maybe you guys will have less of a case to convince me otherwise. Yeah. But like, yeah, like like you said, they're sort of like, they're not quite set, set dressing or furniture as you sometimes like prefers the status of secondary characters. But they were like sort of close. The catalyst thing, I think, is a good, um, well said uh, way to describe it, Chris. So that like, yeah, again, they serve a purpose in the story. But they are not really, they're much less, now that I think about it, characters unto themselves, even versus the kidnappers, and certainly versus the protagonist, Chilean one, and the Argentine. So, given that, like, yeah, they were, like, somewhat, again, this sounds like a negative con- connotation, but flatly described, because that's mm-hmm. all they sort of needed to be. So I think, like, there's nothing wrong with them, but there's not much, there's not enough to them even in light of what we said previously, to give them a one. It's not It's not a fall of the story. It's just kind of maybe yeah. by design. Exactly, exactly. So, Yeah, I... I um, there are things that are interesting about these supporting characters. There are, like, things that make them all different from each other aside from their nationalities. But, but what are... Like, but what? not... They have, like, one other, like... Not, yeah, tick. they each have, like, yeah. one thing about them. So there's not enough there for me to give it a one. So I'm probably going to go with you guys and give exactly zero like it just yeah, again like again through no fault of the story possibly by intentional design like that's just the way they are and yeah that's why i feel like i have to give them a zero yeah um all right so let's leave off there for uh 
supporting and move on to dialogue with Scott. Alrighty, so this is again an, an item we've discussed going way back to um, literary episodes. So shall I count the description and so forth as dialogue or like the actual spoken in quotes lines? Shall we discuss? Is the rest style? I think for the this former style. I think for this, yeah. Okay. I think for this, it's it's what's what is actual dialogue. Yeah. You know? So that's fine. So given that, I'm leaning towards a, a softer zero, but only because a there's not much spoken dialogue. A lot of it's like implied, like they have to retell the story. So it's not mm-hmm. like they're retelling the story verbatim every fucking time. And yeah, the banter with like the soccer thing is maybe the highlight of the dialogue. Yeah. And that's fine. Like it's an interesting little curio piece, I guess, little section. But was, again. It lasts very briefly, and there's no there's no real dialogue between the main characters between the couple. The biggest amount of dialogue is the one gunman talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Like, given about that, the rape. Yeah, like well, <laughs> or the potential rape and and the soccer thing, but <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, but yeah, you're right. Like that's basically like that's the extent of the actual exchange lines of dialogue between characters throughout. And again, like the the roommates and the neighbors have like. A line or two each, but that's hardly anything. Right. So, like, yeah, again, perhaps by design and so forth. Not that it's bad. It's not bad dialogue. It's just that there's not much of it. And, again, it ser- serves a greater purpose. So, therefore, it's not, like, meant to be standout dialogue unto itself. I think is how I'm looking at it. I think I have to agree on the dialogue. There's – nothing's bad, but there's not anything that's standout. Mm-hmm. And exactly. it, there's there's nothing, like, great about it. And I, maybe it loses something in translation. I don't know, but um, it's possible. But either way, it's not like it. But it, like I say, it's not bad. It's just right. whatever. It's it's incidental to the story, you know. So like precisely. Yeah. That's I mean that's <laughs> all I have to really say. I, I, I'm I'm in agreement with you guys um, because a lot of even like the dialogue, it'll start with dialogue and then go into like the description. That's not really them. So yeah, I have to give you again. No fault of the story, right. um, but just by design, yeah, I'm going to have to give it a zero. All right. So let's move on to style. Default zero, me. I guess, as we sometimes say. Um, so, I mean, it's a short story. There's not – I get there. there's a good amount of style in this story, though, for, for it being so short. And, like, I, I like how it goes back and forth between the present and, like, the, the uh, flashbacks. That's interesting. Um, there's a very, like – you know, coming together feel of all the characters, even the supporting ones are like, you know, none of them really know each other all that well, <laughs> yeah. but they bond on certain points. Like the Chileans drink. There's uh, at one point, I think the Argentine and uh, the Spaniard are smoking a joint together. So like you get these little like glimpses of things just through. you like hints of their greater yeah, lives. Exactly. And, and, and the kidnapping itself, you get a really good feel for a kind of like claustrophobic, you know, being stuck in a mm. car with these guys. So I think the style is done pretty well in this story. I'm going it, to – it'll take a lot for you guys to convince me to give it a zero. I'll say. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to try to convince you. I'm actually going to pick out my favorite uh, little part or at least line. So it's when they – after the kidnapping and they're getting they're coming back to their place and describing the Chilean. He lives with an Ecuadorian writer and she lives with two other friends, Spanish, one Chilean, another Chilean. They aren't really friends or they are. That's not why they live together. They're all just passing through. They're all writers and they're in Mexico and, and write thanks to a grant. Although the thing they do the very least is write. Yeah. <laughs> like I like that little line. And there are other, there's other things like it, but that one's definitely stand out to me. Mm. The description, I think one of you mentioned the way the um, surrounding details and so forth are described. I think it's a very keen eye right. for that. So I got to give a lot of credit on that front. So I think, like I said, that's why I asked you, how should I count dialogue? Because if the rest is style, I think the style is very strong. Yeah. Even if it is a translation, I thought it had a nice flow to it. It's almost somewhat stream of consciousness, but not quite. There's there a lot are, of, they're there not are, run on sentences. They're just very long sentences yeah. broken it's, up by it's, commas. It's, impu- it's impulsive in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's, it's almost like breathlessly describing, which sort of goes to the effect of mm-hmm. describing this event. Telling the story. Yeah. So I'm going to have to go very strong one on style, possibly the, the strongest or one of the strongest parts of this story. So yeah, I'd probably agree with that. Actually, I, I, I agree with you. I think the style is great. Um, I, it's it's done in that it's done in that way where it, it there is an impulsive element to it. Mm. I mean, because they're retelling the story, and like I said, but the supporting characters, there's a, a sense of apathy, but then they care, and then like it's 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 like little things, like you said, like that that they weren't they weren't friends, but they were. That's what they lived together. 
you know, the la- the fact that they don't do a lot of writing. I mean, these are like little details that are kind of impulsive yeah. and passing, but just a lot of really great color exactly. in, a, in, in a in a in very few words. So. Mm-hmm. Yep, agreed. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that sounds like ones all around. I think so. Um, and then that's going to move us on to recommendation with Chris. I absolutely positively recommend this movie or movie. I, I recommend this story. <laughs> it's it's like five and a half, maybe six pages. Um, it's a really nice read. You get a lot out of it. I thought it was very affecting. There's a, like a lot of really nice little details in it. And any faults we m- have given it are just like probably more design. Yeah. It's not anything. A it's fault not a mark the, against it. In yeah, a it's not way. a fault yeah. of the writer. It's not a fault of the um, translation. Um, I, I enjoyed reading this a great deal. Um, I had hoped to kind of read it again before this for no other reason but because – I I liked all the little things. Mm. Um so yeah, I'm giving it a strong one. I enjoyed it. Now, I'm not sure going into it, I probably would have like again, this isn't just the story I usually gravitate to, but objectively, I have to say, yeah, it's a solidly composed story for everything we just said. So, I know Steve-O, you started to steal your thunder, but you technically did recommend it. This was your pick. But I think at this point, I'd be like it it, it wouldn't be the thing I normally would tell people but now having read it or someone asked me i stumbled upon the story did you read it and what would you recommend i'd say yeah you know what give read it's pretty solid i probably won't go out and tell people about it because i have so many other things that i've read yeah. but certainly if it comes up again i'd say yeah you know what i remember reading that story and it was uh, it was goddamn well done so check it out i forgot in the same way like recommendations is a softer one for me because i'm not going to go out like praising the you know yeah. praising the exactly. story to everybody that i see <laughs> yeah. but i will Absolutely, if somebody asked me for, you know, if I think this story is going to be, like, up somebody's alley as, like, a type of story that they'd like, I'll recommend it to them for sure. Mm. If, if uh, you know, if somebody asked me, hey, is this a story that I should read, I'll probably say yes to that as well. Mm. Like, I, it's a short read, A. It's uh, engaging throughout. Mm. And... Slight te- technical difficulties there, folks. We got kidnapped in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but we're back. So uh, I, based on everything that I just said, which I just re-listened to again to get back into it, uh, I recommend it. That was ba- I was almost done. So <laughs> I was about to say yes. So one for one. recommendation for me. Yep. Uh, Scott, did you give it a one? As yeah, well? I ended up giving it a one. Yeah. Okay. So that's it for everybody, right? We, yep. uh Any any last thoughts? No, like I said, like this is a solid one again. Not something I normally gravitate towards, but I think it's uh, fortuitous that you found it, and I enjoyed reading through it. And I enjoyed talking about it just now as well. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know where you found it. I'd never heard of it. Uh, I I really enjoyed it. This short read, yeah, very enjoyable. So my final thought is thank you for thank you. <laughs> yes, hey, thank you. You're welcome, and so are all of you. Yes. Uh, so anyway, where does it leave us? Uh, that gives us. We all had the same scores. We gave the exact same scores to every single question. Uh, really? We all had a seven, <laughs> all right. and uh, that's a pretty easy thing to get an aggregate on. It's yeah. a seven like for said, all of us. Very solid story. Certainly higher than average, but not amazing, but definitely worth checking out. So, uh, yeah. So, thanks for joining us here at The Lost Signals. Uh, We're going to sign off. I am Steve Ramosi. I've been joined by Chris Morgan. I have been and ever shall be Chris Morgan. And Scott Thurlow. And i got to go hail a cat to Mexico City. See you next time. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows and on Facebook and Twitter for updates.